one at you. Traffic helicopter 630. Mike Lim is going to be operating over a cherry orchard just upriver from Lincoln Rock on the Arondo side. Okay, and here it is to the side here. Now I've got to come up with a good way to get in. i got to go over all these wires. So I'm going over some wires, and then there's some more wires ahead of me. But at least they're easy to see. And then I get down over the trees, usually five to ten feet up. And here I am, just in position, and you can't see it, but as I fly over the trees, the branches are going crazy. And then you can see these wires here up ahead of me. I gotta be careful I don't go too close. Gotta eyeball them, which is not easy. And then depending on how wet and thick the trees are, I'll, I'll go either once uh, every row, every other row, or every third row. I'm gonna do every other row here. And I do this till I basically uh, blow around all the trees, all the cherry trees. The obstacles in this orchard, we've got some tall trees on the edge of the orchard, they're not too close. Got some, uh, the wires of course, which don't go directly across, they go on an angle. Which makes them even harder to deal with. Most of the trees are around the same height, that's good. I don't go anywhere near the wires. A lot of times I'll play music. And also, uh, what I normally do is take the door off before I fly over. Because it gets hot when the sun comes in. Right now it's starting to get warm. There's no way to cool it off. I don't have air conditioning. And if I open the vent, there's not enough forward air speed. It's really unnerving when you go this close to the wires. I don't know if you could see the cherries or not. See me blowing them ahead of us. This orchard's um, got a lot of gaps in it. That's not usual. It's probably a pretty old orchard. And as the trees died, they weren't replaced. That's why there's gaps. It's unfortunate because it's well, it's kind of ugly. I have to be careful on my turns because my tail's hanging out way behind me. And um, if there's trees or wires back there, I've got to make sure i got plenty of room for the tail to make it around. So that, I make a lot of my turns kind of slowly moving while I'm doing it. If you hold the collective too tightly, there's a chance that you could um, prevent the governor from making adjustments it needs to make. I have never had a low rotor horn, but I've been warned by other people who have. Can't have a death grip on it. Can't get let go though, really, either. So now if I just turned here to the uh, left, my tail would go right into that tall tree, so I have to kind of maneuver, then turn. Well, I don't have to turn at all. Something says I have to turn. Sometimes on short rows, I'll go up and down sideways. 
So the distance I am from the trees, my downwash really shakes the trees on either side of the helicopter, the first ones, and then it go, extends the next row on either side. So I really get a good shaking in at this altitude. Some folks like to fly a lot higher. If it were Rainier Cherries, I'd be flying higher. Um, but in general, I like to fly pretty low. I like to do a really thorough job. Got somebody in an orange shirt taking pictures of me. I always wonder if I'm going to be on YouTube. There's really nothing exciting about doing this. It's extremely tedious. It can be dangerous if you lose focus. You lose track of your obstacles. This is my ninth season doing this. Make a decent living if I keep my costs low, which I try to. I get a lot of satisfaction out of doing a good job and having uh, my clients compliment me. There's a pole here, big tree, flying cardboard. A lot of times people have stuff in the backyard that flies around. Could get dangerous if it comes up. When the trees are really wet, I can see the water on them, but I'm not really seeing that today. I finished with this side. I'm going to go with the other side of the wires. I climb up, go over the tower usually. Then I come down the other side. Sometimes I'll spiral down. You don't want to go straight down, especially fast. You get to settling with power. I basically pick up where I left off on this side of the wires. A couple of trees over here I missed. I like orchards without gaps. I like orchards without obstacles too. On an orchard that's got no obstacles, you really knock it off quickly. problem with these wires, they go through on an angle, so every row, they're a little bit closer. Every row's a little shorter than the one before, and you really can't see exactly where they are. It's really unnerving.
And there's this little canyon cutting across. I know I can go to the end. This fence marks the boundary between their orchard and the neighbor's orchard. So I want to just these trees, not the neighbor's trees. And then they've got some more over here. And I gotta go a little wide around these trees, the big trees. You saw, but there was a guy pulling a blower in the next orchard over. The blowers are used to spray chemicals, um, you know, pesticides and whatever they need to spray on the trees. But what will happen is if they want to dry the trees and they don't want to pay for a helicopter, they'll run the blowers with no chemicals in them and they'll just blow the air around. And if you've got young trees, um, that's not a bad way to do it. It takes a long time because you got to go down every row. Uh, and if the young trees, young small trees, it'll do a decent job. But if you've got really bigger trees or they're really dense, um, helicopter's the way to go. Uh, either way, the helicopter's much, much faster. So this little block here is a lot better for me to dry because there's no obstacles, there's no wires here other than those trees we just passed, the tall trees. So if you think flying helicopters is a glamour job, uh, that's not all glamour. There's nothing glamorous about this. It's really boring. You also need to have really good control of the helicopter. You need to be familiar with the helicopter that you're flying too. Because if you're used to flying a smaller helicopter and then you get into something like an R44 from maybe an R22, uh, the problem is you don't realize that your blades are longer, your tail is longer, and you gotta keep track of that stuff when you're flying, when there's, especially when there's obstacles. Every year there's an accident. Last year we, we didn't have any accidents, but I think it's because we didn't do much flying. But every year somebody has an accident and a lot of times people get killed. The trees ahead of us on the other side of the fence uh, look like pear trees.
I think I probably fly lower than most pilots. I have brought home uh, leaves, my skids. But I just know that it does a much better job. one there's one more section to this orchard on the other side of the wires on the other side of the canyon I climb up wires wires everywhere uh, these trees under the wires are, I don't know, apple or pear, I didn't really look last time. And then these darker ones are cherries. I descend down. It's funny, but if you do the same orchard over and over and over again, you kind of remember it. You remember like weird branches and you know, broken pipes and junk in the orchard and gaps like this. So the problem with this part of the orchard is that we've got some wires running along the, the far end. So again, I don't go all the way to the end. Stop a few trees short. There were some tall trees behind me just then, so I had to kind of make a weird turn. Birds in the orchard, that's bad. I had one grower tell me that birds cost him more than I did. Because they, once you, uh, one bird peck on a cherry, can't sell it. I like to go down the aisles instead of over the tops of the trees when I could see the aisles. And the reason for that, um, I think it does better coverage. It gets on either side of the helicopter at the same time. And it also offers a slightly safer place to crash if you're going to have an engine failure. I'd rather come down between the trees than in the trees. Although in the long run it probably wouldn't matter. Also, I normally fly with a case of uh, oil <laughs> in the front passenger footwell. Um, what does that do? Why do I do that? I do that uh, for ballast, basically. Just makes it uh, easy to weigh down the front of the helicopter a little bit more. And what that does for me is it keeps me more level in flight so my tail's not drooping. And I forgot to put that on board before I left. It's not a major deal. I, I, I do fly with it like that probably about half the time. And the other half the time I forget.
say that I don't really like this orchard. Between the wires and the gaps and the wires, huh, it's just not a very pleasant orchard to dry. You can see the tire tracks down below the trees. That's probably where they drove up and down with blowers. Sometimes it's hard to see the aisles between the trees. What's interesting about this orchard too is that there are poles sticking up from topside irrigation or cooling. Um, what's weird about that is that you don't water cherry trees from the top because cherry trees, you don't want them to get wet when they've got fruit on them. Uh, that's normally something that you'd find in an apple orchard where they want to cool them down. So I'm wondering uh, it just seems to me the trees this age just still have those... I have no idea what that's all about here. It's too weird. Maybe that bottom half was apples not too long ago. It seems younger. So if I'm not listening to music or podcasts while I'm flying, I'm just thinking of stuff like that. Like, why is that? How did that get there? What are they thinking? Oh, a little bit left. That's it. So I just climb out of here and, and head back.